Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I want to write what I don't believe to be wrong, but at the very least to make one thing a little bit clearer for folks who are interested. I want to talk about how you can disassemble and maintain the Spydeco Delica. So, um, for a long time, and by the way, this is a uh, Spydeco Delica in K390 here. Um, it's not going to replace, of course, Stan, which is my size comparison Delica, but I'm curious about the steel, and you know, hey, why not, right? Um, and so I picked this little guy up, but it is fresh from the factory. It's not, uh, I bought this, by the way. I think I got it from, was it Knifeworks? Um, either way, I, I, I purchased this guy, but it is, uh, it's definitely my, uh, my knife. And so, uh, it is factory fresh, though. I've carried it for, I think, two days or something like that. Eh, maybe less than that. Either way, uh, so uh, this isn't an, a necessary cleanup, but it is one that I'd like to do just to show this off. Because every so often, you know, I, I've had a video up for a while about why you really don't want to disassemble and maintain the Delica. And honestly... Yeah, that's true. Um, the, the Delica, for all of the, the, the love that I have for this knife, and there is considerable of that, um, but the, the Delica is not a knife that is super well designed for this assembly. And the reason is something I'm going to show you in just a moment. Um, it's one simple little thing, but it is a thing that, that, that makes a major difference in the approach to the Delica here. And that is not this screw, although, boy, that screw ain't helping anything. Actually, let me move these screws along. I always keep my screws kind of in the order. I took them off the knife in this top part here. So pivot, you know, it's a uh, yeah, pivot, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. Anyways, hopefully I'll be able to pop this guy open here now shortly. Uh, but uh, I have a video talking about why this is often very difficult. And uh, very often I get well-meaning individuals who message me and say, but Nick, there's another way. There's another way. And it's like, yes, I, I know that there's another way. It is a possibility. It's not the case that the, 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 the knife, oh crap, I have to take off the clip too. Uh, it's not the case that the knife is completely, you know, impervious to disassembly, so to speak. And by the way, uh, one thing I have done to this particular model is I, um, uh, sanded the clip on it, uh, such that it is no longer black, at least on the surface, because that black clip doesn't really do anything for, well, certainly for me. So you can see here on the back, it's still got a little of that black shit going on there, but, uh, that's, that's okay. So, anyways, let's go ahead and put this, uh, pop this guy apart. I'm using an iFixit spudger tool here. Good lord, that's oily. Uh, oof. I, <laughs> did I take this apart? Um, but okay. The uh, biggest beef that I have with Delica Disassembly is exactly one little tiny part right here. Come on. There we go. If you ever curious about any of the tools I'm using, nickshabazz.com slash tools. And that is this little piece right here. So this little spacer here, this little area in the back is the backlock um, spacer, basically. This is where the backlock spring lives. And this entire piece is plastic. I can understand that from a cost-cutting perspective, perhaps. And by the way, you get a nice view of how a backlock works as we're doing this. But um, anyways, I can understand it from a cost-cutting perspective, but... Boy, is it frustrating because they are using a little plastic pin right here to locate that. Because in order for this to properly hold this backlock spring in place, which is under a non-zero amount of tension, right? Um, in order for that to be held in place, uh, there needs to be pins both above and below. And they are using a little plastic pin here, which then threads into this, well, threads this, then sticks into this little hole right here. And certainly it's enough. The FRN here is not a, it's not a terrible material right? FRN does fine work, and, and there are lots of knives that don't even have liners with it. Um, but nonetheless, as a result of that, um, trying to do this in the conventional way, sort of where you try to put it together and slide the spring in here and then lock everything down with the knife di partially disassembled just doesn't end up working out. And there is another approach, and that's the approach I'm going to show you today. Um, I still desperately, desperately wish that they had done this just slightly differently. Backlocks are generally very easy to disassemble. They're, they're, they're very happy to disassemble. There's no problem with them. But this little issue here, I mean, this little lack of, even if they put a little metal post in there, makes this a, a little bit more of a to-do. And it makes it a little trickier. And there are lots of little tricks, and I'll, I'll show you a couple and, you know, give a couple a try if the first one doesn't work, right? Um, but nonetheless, yeah. So that's why I have historically given the advice that it's really just better not to disassemble this particular knife. That's also partly because, honestly, backlocks are pretty straightforward to maintain. 
right? And by the way, it was not quite centered. It was slightly favoring the show side uh, when we got this, but the action was quite smooth. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, we're going to keep that going on. Um, so, uh, anyways, uh, yeah, it's kind of the, the odd person out, and the Endura suffers from the same issues, actually. Um, it's the odd one out in terms of backlocks that are a little tricky to disassemble. Uh, so, I suppose I'm writing an ancient wrong here. Ancient meaning, when did I make that video? Like, three years ago? Something like that. I'm gonna go ahead and use a little knife pivot lube here on the, uh, washer, just to keep everything... Flowing freely, that was way too much, but that's okay. I'll scrape some of it up and put it around the pivot here. And then we'll go ahead and we'll drop the blade into place. Into place. Nice. I think that's a place in France. No, that's Calais or something. I Whatever it is, it's a thing. I'm working okay. I'm trying. Trying my best. That's all we can really hope for. One of the awkward things. Here we go. We're heading into rant country. Welcome. One of the awkward things about running a YouTube channel for uh, a non-trivial piece of time is that you accumulate a lot of words, right? You say a bunch of stuff. Uh, and after a while, uh, you don't necessarily agree with everything you've said, right? Uh, it is a very natural part of being human to learn, to realize that, wow, at that point in time in my existence, I was hashtag not a brilliant man. Or, or just even to realize that, you know, your opinions have changed. Your tastes have shifted to get new information, which makes you reevaluate your old information. By the way, I'm putting everything back together here, except I'm going to pop this screw or this uh, little bolt out here. But anyways, um, that's one of the downsides to doing a, a having a longer term channel is that the time the, the time depth of the channel increases, and as the time depth of the channel increases, the chances that you're going to say something, uh, or that you're going to change your opinion about something really do go up, and this is something that I think fundamentally we should not consider to be a problem, right? I mean. Uh, certainly, it's it's not great to have things that I disagree with sitting around on the internet, and I've tried my best to kind of, uh, where I, I, I am blatantly wrong, to, to, to right the wrong in some way, shape, or form, to update videos, to take videos down in some cases. Um, there have been a couple of videos that I've taken down precisely because I, I feel like I wasn't in the right, um, and not necessarily... Um, uh, because I, you know, but just like uh, that review was marred by my dumpth, uh, or something like that. I don't freaking know. But anyways, oh, nope, not that one yet. Um, but it's, it's always, it's a tricky thing to sort of negotiate that. Because uh, with the internet, all of your speech is semi-permanent, right? Um, I, God knows I couldn't get Google to delete the information I put out there if I tried. So, uh, you know, it, it's out there. And so I think we need to, uh, to, 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 at the very least, understand and appreciate that people do learn um, and that that learning is actually really important, right? If you treat somebody poorly because they've changed their mind, because they've realized that a stake that, that, that they once held is, is really not a good one, uh, whether because they had bad information, they had, you know, uh, they were in a different place. I mean, Lots of humans mature and change their views. I mean, there are lots of reasons that people change their minds, but there's no real harm in it, right? You know, as a scientist, that's kind of cool. You know, when I realize that something is different than I thought it was about the world, that's awesome information. That's, that's good information. It is quite literally the definition of information. It's something that produces a change uh, in your mind state, in your model of the world. But anyways, so I'm, I'm doing my best to kind of right some of those wrongs where they come up, but it still can be a little tricky. So, okay, what I've done here is I've put everything back together. The spring here is fully installed, and the uh, I'm going to go ahead and just take a check in here with a flashlight and make sure that those two pin, that that plastic pin is seated well in the liners. And indeed, what we see here is that it is. There is no, uh, there's no gap or lag or anything like that. So now what I should be able to do, uh, and what I've pulled off before, but not on camera, of course, is something along these lines, where I should be able to push the, um, uh, basically push the, uh, this back spring into position, or uh, push the back lock piece into position. And as I do so, uh, there we go. I should be able to press through 
this little bit here, and actually, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lubricate it. Uh, the reason for that is twofold, partly because the backlock itself is moving against it. Um, but the other issue, or the other reason for it is simply to let it slide in there a little bit easier, uh, more readily. So I'm making sure to align the D-shape of the pivot, of this particular little pivot, in with the D-shape of everything else there. And so that way it's not going anywhere. And now what I should be able to do is, past a certain point, press this backspacer in. And as I do that, there should come a moment a blessed freaking moment wherein I am able to slip this into position. There we go. And see, what just happened is that this little piece there slid all the way through. Now, at this point, I can press it the rest of the way through, and I can tighten down this last screw here, and I'm going to use a little thread locker on it. But that works. It's okay. Is it ideal? No, not necessarily, but it's definitely a better approach than I had tried previously, and, uh, yeah. I, I still absolutely prefer, for instance, the design of the Chaparral, um, which has a, a very different, well, not very different, it has a slightly different internal mechanism uh, there that uh, holds that spring differently and makes that less problematic, but still, um, they, you know, that, that absolutely did work. Okay, this is too tight right now. Um, the question is whether it has blade play well being too tight. It does not. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll loosen this up a little bit. Uh, we playing. We're not playing. We may be a little too tight here. So I'll loosen that up just a tad. Okay. Are we playing? We're not playing. Okay, good. Let's loosen just a little further. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. And the centering is still very slightly off, in this case favoring the, uh, that would be clip side. It may have actually been the clip side all along. I don't know, but either way, um, we've roughly got this guy back together. I'm going to go ahead and reinstall the uh, clip here, uh, just because, well, I like a pocket clip, right? But, uh, yeah. So anyways, I mean, that is a method for disassembling and maintaining the Delica and the Endura and whatnot. Um, and, and so I, I, I have to appreciate that. And the other thing, actually, I want to... Well, I'm uh, well, I'm thinking about it here. Oh, come on, freaking iPad. Yeah, I'm wearing a Batman mask. I know that breaks face ID, but calm your freaking pivots. I want to thank uh, Fabian uh, for uh, sending this... Uh, just sending an email uh, that hit at exactly the right moment. Uh, it, it was kind of yet another, oh, well, there's this other way to put the Delica together, and it, and it just was like, oh, yeah, I should probably make a freaking video about that sooner or later. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. Uh, welcome to this video. Uh, you are uh, 12 minutes into it. So I wish the Delica were put together a little bit better for disassembly so that you didn't have to dick around with it so much with that. Um, and, and, you know, that's definitely, that is a thing, but it is doable. And especially if you know that kind of trick, it definitely gets easier. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to post this video up. I'm going to have a bunch of people saying, Nick, I've been telling you this for years. And like, dude, I've been knowing this for years. I've just been making other videos. But um, there we go. This guy is running great, actually. We have no play, easy close, and nice little blade here. And I'll let you guys know at some point in time, and gals, of course, um, the, how the K390 steel is uh, doing in the longer run here. And... Uh, yeah, but anyways, I hope this has been interesting to you, that you learned something, and more importantly, that you understand that learning things is good, uh, and that acknowledging that you made a mistake, that you were wrong, that you didn't have all the information, that you that you are a human who, who, is, who is troubled by irrationalities and things like that, is perfectly reasonable, and that you won't hesitate to, uh, you know, act in such a way as to let that be a thing when it's actually true. So anyways, I hope this has been interesting to you, and have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.